guys want to stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I gotta add a bunch of stuff to this agenda. Our clerk treasurer's office apologizes um, for adding this stuff after after Friday, but uh, a lot of it's kind of like year-end stuff that they're just trying to get done. So um, one thing I'll add at the very end is some budget modifications. We have a memo from Nancy. Also, our building department asked us to consider a proposal from Chazen and Company and our new building department official, Ethan Smith. Um, we can, I'm, I'm okay with putting this on the consent agenda if you guys are. So we want to send um, Ethan to some yeah. code enforcement officer training. Yeah. Saw that. Okay, so that's going to go on consent. And the next item is we need to redo the public hearing that we did last week regarding our CFA application to CDBG to get money for a sewer conveyance. So we didn't take a picture of the notice. So um, is it okay if we put that on the consent agenda as well? So we'll set a public hearing for June 17th. Mm -hmm. Next item, um, our treasurer is working with our attorney on a contract to purchase some accounting software regarding GASB 34. So this is just authorizing the mayor or designee to proceed with an agreement um, with associated value services for the provision of GASB 34. Put that on the consent. Mm -hmm. And then two other items. I'd like to set a public hearing for, the, for June 27th to amend Chapter 198 of our code regarding vehicles and traffic for parking meter operations on Sundays. So that'll be a public hearing on June 27th. And then I'd also like to have a second public hearing on that date to establish a property tax credit for those donating to the charitable gift reserve fund. Uh, well, actually, let's just put that at the very end of this agenda because we have to uh, Talk about take another one. item yeah. uh, under consideration before we do that. So I'll just add that to the very end of this agenda. And um, that is all I, okay, I wanted to remove item number four from our business agenda, setting recreation fee amounts. I, I created a worksheet um, on some amounts. I shared it with our attorneys. They said that they wanted to discuss uh, whether that would go into our code or whether it could just be put on that standalone fee schedule. I assumed that we could put it on the standalone fee schedule, but they said they want to discuss this concept with me tomorrow before we before we chew on it further. So I'm just going to pull that from number f uh, from the business agenda. And so anyone else want to tweak this agenda? Okay, I motion that we approve the agenda as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, announcements. Don, you said you wanted to share some stuff? Yeah, I have one announcement for the public and one for the board. Um, Rainbow Crosswalk will be, pa uh, will be uh, painted on uh, Friday morning. Uh, by our Department of Public Works uh, out there next to the Peace Park where the illegal weddings were performed in 2004. Um, donated funds were delivered to the Treasurer's Office uh, today, which will allow for the purchase of the paint tomorrow, which will be applied on Friday. Uh, and it will be uh, the finish line of this, uh, this year's uh, Pride March. It will be the Rainbow Crosswalk. So we're real happy to see that happen. And a lot of people in the community donated funds via GoFundMe to allow for this to happen and uh, have our deepest Rainbow appreciation. Um, for the board, just a, a quick note. I spent uh, some time today. I had invited both the incoming uh, planning board chair and the outgoing planning board chair to uh, meet with me to try to brainstorm on uh, the NBR. And I was able to meet uh, with, with Michael Zierler today. Um, he did want the board to know that the planning board hasn't been able to discuss this. It's been on the agenda, but their meetings have gone late. And it was his request that we not have the discussion uh, this evening on NBR until we can get some guidance from the planning board that they will schedule it for the beginning of their next meetings to make sure it actually happens. 
Um, he uh, also wanted me to make the point that we're spending a lot of time talking about this. Um, the current planning board is going well below the minimums that are currently in the code. Um, so I guess his, his point was it's guidance, it's not a requirement. And since the planning board may or may not you know, follow this guidance, he wonders if, if it's worth spending all this time on it. Um, Are you talking about parking? Yeah, parking. Okay. Just yeah, just that, that minor issue. Uh, if the village board does decide to use maximums, he asks that uh, together with that, uh, they give some guidance to the planning board and how they would use that as a tool. He didn't see an easy way to uh, turn that that uh, advice or guidance into action. And that was all I got. Can I add something to your announcement of course, regarding of course. crosswalks? So um, some, some folks, including Don and Dan Torres, organized uh, the effort to raise money privately. So with those funds, we're paying for the paint, but we're also paying for our DPW staff to, to, to perform the work. Labor. So I want it to be clear that when folks see our staff doing the work, they're keeping track of their hours, and the funds that were donated privately are, are are uh, being reimbursed to the village. Well, and for the board members, uh, the press has been invited to uh, visit the site at 11 o'clock on Friday morning if anyone's available and interested. Cool. Uh, any other announcements? Yes, uh, just a reminder that uh, the franchise hauler goes into effect on June 1st. Uh, contact County Waste at 518-877-7007 if you would like to enroll. Uh, the village and the town are uh, very happy to announce that there is a grace period for the month of June to allow residents to close out current uh, contracts with their haulers. Um, all of the haulers except for one have indicated thus far that they will indicate that well, they will issue refunds. Um, the one hauler that is not is still reviewing the legal changes we've made before they uh, make a determination. We're hopeful to have good news on that in the coming days. Any other announcements? I had one announcement. So we had a workshop regarding the capacity of our wastewater treatment plant at our meeting last week. And um, one thing that, that Don was interested in as a follow-up is just the actual um, data regarding individual days in terms of when we surpass the one and a half million gallon permitted limit. So I printed out the four years um, 2014 through 2017 and uh, what we have are any day where it goes above 1.5 million gallons in terms of uh, effluent it's marked in red so in 2017 we had 31 days above the, the permitted amount 2016 11 days 2015 25 days 2014 23 so yeah, I think what we were trying to look at is kind of the average, but also be mindful of how many occurrences we have when we surpass the permitted amount. So I think looking at both, to, uh, to Don's point, are important. It's not just you can look at averages or you can just look at individual days. You've got to look at the data from a few angles. So this is all available for our board or anyone who's interested. Um, anyone here for public comment? Yeah, it's missing. I know. He hasn't put it in yet. KT is pointing out that the, so what we look at in terms of an inflow and infiltration is we're trying to be mindful of how much rain. So does rain impact the, the wastewater treatment plant? Um, so if you have many days where you blow out the permitted amount, is it a result of a lot of rain? So what we also keep track of is the, uh, the monthly precipitation. So in our 2017 data, we have some zeros across the bottom because uh, we haven't populated those, those uh, precipitation amounts yet. Mm -hmm. um, anyone here from the public interested in making a comment? Please, uh, you can grab a mic and just state your name. I'm Janelle Piotter, and I live at 227 Mountain Rest Road here in town of New Paltz. Um, I'm here um, as a resident, but also as a member of the Climate Action Coalition and also the 
um, appointed coordinator for New Paltz Climate Smart. Um, I'm here to testify in favor of the single hauler system for New Paltz trash pickup. Um, thank you for the, the research and the difficult decision you all had to make. Um, having a single hauler will decrease diesel fumes, which are carcinogenic as well as climate changing in the village of New Paltz and will save money for individuals as, as well as create savings in decreased costs for road damage. I know most of you have um, <laughs> perhaps been yelled at or harassed by a few people who oppose single hauler because they feel that personal choice is the most important thing. However, I believe that for the benefit of clean air and for climate, working together collectively is more important. I know that I represent many people that feel the same way as I do. Um, I don't think you've heard from many voices uh, supporting single hauler system because frankly, I just think that many of them feel it makes sense and uh, stay silent because they don't realize um, that the extent of the backlash by a few. So um, if we had a large group of people here tonight, I'd say raise your hand if you're in favor of single hauler because I, I really do think that sadly you're not hearing from, from a majority that really are in favor of it. So a uh, thank you again for, for making the decision that you did. Thank you. And just to point out, um, while there have been a few very loud people uh, opposing the single hauler, I have gotten a lot of feedback from people that are very excited about the environmental gains, about the amount of money that they're going to save on a monthly basis. Uh, the Facebook posts, if you look at them, they're very much more liked than they are have uh, any negative feedback as well. So uh, don't be thrown off by how loud these few people are. Thank you for your comment. But we're very appreciative of you coming and saying that, so thank you. Anyone else interested in a public comment? Hi, my name is Samrat. Um, I'm a resident of New Paltz. I'm also a high school teacher. I teach at Walkill High School. And, and during multiple sessions with my students I'm, um, and discussions with uh, my colleagues as well, I'm often shocked at how little people understand the issue of global climate change and its impacts on our communities, our country. Um, and um, I find the resistance to ideas that are common sense, and I find that people are resistant to common sense ideas, and they're also, they like to cling to old habits uh, of being or doing things. Uh, words such as freedom and choice are thrown around as if just by saying those words and repeating them, your argument becomes sound. Um, so most of these people, they also seem to be oblivious to the fact that we can make relatively easy changes to our lifestyles so that we can begin chipping away at this uh, enormous problem of, of climate change. So I'm very glad that I live in the um, community of New Paltz, I'm in the town of New Paltz, where elected officials are willing to take decisions that look at the long-term picture and not just short-term benefits. Uh, I would like to applaud your decision uh, to switch to a single hauler trash pickup and uh, Janelle has said most of the things that I would just second. Um, it's, it's, it's just uh, quite shocking to me that people don't see the benefits of this, especially if this was done uh, countrywide, because as we know, these uh, garbage pickup trucks, they have offer you the incredible uh, fuel economy of two to three miles per gallon, and who wouldn't want that, right? But, um, and, and just New Paul's doing this would be, granted, would be pointless thing, but if communities across our vast nation switch started making these decisions, I think we would start making significant dents um, in the greenhouse emissions um, uh, in our nation. So, so thank you again very much for this decision of yours. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else public comment? Hi, my name is Iris Marie Bloom and I just uh, really wanted to take the time to thank uh, the village board and the government of New Paltz village and town uh, for several environmental initiatives, including the single hauler, which I want to talk about a little bit. But also, I haven't uh, been, been able to testify here since uh, Pilgrim Pipelines was essentially defeated, thanks to the leadership of New Paltz, New Paltz village and New Paltz uh, town. So that is a tremendous thank you 
I'm charging my electric vehicle now at least once a week uh, here, uh, thanks to the action that you've taken. Um, and then the single hauler trash system makes so much sense. I've actually talked to many people uh, in the village and the town who all say, of course, it just makes obvious sense. So there's a tremendous amount of silent support. Um, diesel fumes are not only well-known carcinogen, they're very well studied to cause cancer, especially over long term, especially for um, when babies, toddlers, and pregnant mothers are exposed, which they certainly have been. Uh, one of the people commented that she couldn't take the fumes anymore from having like a, a garbage truck picking up every single day of the week. Uh, so from a health perspective as well, asthma, respiratory difficulties are increased by diesel fumes. From a climate perspective, you know, this town was flooded with the Wallkill River rising during Hurricane Irene. Um, major storms are climate driven, so why wouldn't we want to do everything possible to reduce uh, diesel fumes and reduce the use of fossil fuel. We just defeated a major fossil fuel pipelines. So to be consistent. So you've taken the right, ac right action time and again, and I really wanted to thank you. Uh, and I'm speaking as a director of Protecting Our Waters, which is a nonprofit, a member of New Paltz Climate Action Coalition, um, and also Coalition Against Pilgrim Pipelines New York, which is continuing to work on all these issues, even though Pilgrim Pipelines, we believe, has been defeated. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else interested in making a public comment? No. Um, my apologies, I have a family conflict that leaves me unable to stay this evening. So, excuse me. Thanks, Don. I need a little help in terms of the, this uh, consent agenda. Um, mm -hmm. So I put Ethan on the consent agenda, is that correct? Yeah. Yes, yes. Did. And I put the, um, the public hearing regarding the CDBG application on the public, yes. the public the CIA uh, application. consent yeah. agenda, as well as the June 27th public hearing for the, the chapter 198. I put that on the consent agenda. Yes. And the AVS is also on the consent agenda too, right? AVS? Right. Okay. And that, so, may I add the, the budget modifications? Sure. Or I don't think we do that. Let's just put that at the end. Do it with right. bills and claims. Yeah. And then um, what about Chazen? I think that's business, right? Okay. It's up to you. Okay. All right, so I, I move uh, the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Business agenda. So we're in agreement that we're going to pause and discuss NBR next time. Or did anyone else want to share something regarding NBR? Don asked that we that we wait. Yep. Yeah. Well, we we haven't gotten a new draft anyway. Right. Okay. Um, okay. So, does anyone have any questions about item number two, where we're creating a reserve fund for accepting charitable contributions? So that that has to do with. Uh, the, the ability to deduct the state and local taxes. Um, so this is, this is a way for us to, by a resolution, establish a charitable trust. So 95% of one's tax bill can be put into that trust. And then if we create a law in the future, then the, um, those funds could be used for the purpose of uh, you know, regular government administration. So just to put some context on it, because yep, I ahead. asked him a couple hours ago, I was like, where is this coming from? This is Governor Cuomo's response to the SALT deductions being removed. Um, so this is a workaround whereby people could pay their taxes directly to the village and get 95% of that, not pay their taxes, contribute to the village in this way, and then it would be sort of equivalent to paying your taxes and would be deductible. But are we confident that It's really going to work out that way. I mean, I uh, no, support it, but, setting but it, it up in case it does, that's but exactly where we're at. Okay. So there, there's some concern that the IRS might have trouble with what's being proposed, but as of right now, it seems like uh, the the plan that was identified by by the folks up in Albany that we could 
set up a, a charitable trust that folks could pay into. So I'm going to motion that we um, create a reserve fund for accepting charitable contributions. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And I was going to see how much we should do because, sir, what's your what's your name in the back? Your first name? Rigoberto Avila. Okay. Because um, these two gentlemen, we were going to interview them. So you want to go into exec yeah, session and chat with them? So I motion that we go into executive session for the purpose of um, speaking about a particular individual or corporation. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll be back shortly. Um, we'll talk to John first. We just have to do this, these interviews in executive session.
So, uh, Bill, what should we leave exactly? Right Sam has seconded it. <laughs> Okay, so the next item on this agenda is a discussion of proposed building use fee schedule. So Alberta circulated something, and I actually had something from a while ago that um, I thought would make sense in terms of the way we charge for people using our, mm -hmm. our common space here. Um, so I don't know how closely did everyone look at these. So I think what Alberta is trying to accomplish is just having some compensation for folks using this room or the small conference room as opposed to the way we currently yeah. do it where folks don't pay anything so what she was suggesting is like a one-time use that's less than three hours cost ten bucks but I had this idea of making a distinction between new Paltz people and non new Paltz people because we've actually had this issue mm -hmm. um, sometime last year where there would be like these outside groups who would come and like use this building all day long and make like lots of <laughs> noise and mess. And I think they just identified this room as like a free meeting space. Right. And it was, I don't know, it didn't, so didn't feel kosher. So how would to be a community group or an organization based in New Paltz? Yeah, they could just fill out their application and say that they're from here. It's, you know, folks who live here are already paying for the use of this room via their taxes to a certain extent. Right. I like the idea of being generous with folks who use this room for a variety of events and types of meetings. But I think what Alberta was trying to do was just balance it a little bit mm -hmm. uh, instead of just giving away everything for free. Mm -hmm. I have a question about her group fee, the three hours or more per day. Uh huh. She wants to say 50 bucks per day where it's th for three hours or less is ten dollars. It seemed a little high to me. That's uh, for a one-time use less than three hours is ten bucks. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I wanted to make a distinction. Like I feel like any new Paltz group who's using it for less than three hours. Yeah, you know, I think she wants for the one -shot deal. some sort of Perfect. some sort of payment. So we're not running into you know folks making a mess because we, we do end up cleaning these rooms up yeah. here. Are deposits ever taken? I mean, some of this, I mean, she's recommending it, so, mm -hmm. but I feel like some of this creates paperwork and bureaucracy. Right. Mm -hmm. It's really, she's asking for it, but it's still, you don't want to make it so, I mean, to me, for a $10 one-time use under three hours, it's sort of more trouble than it's worth. Yep. But I, I do like the idea of charging folks who use these rooms for more than three hours. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, I feel like any community group they have, you know, whatever they're interested in chatting about, they're welcome to use these rooms. Like this is different than the town's community center, where they charge for any use. Um, I'd be right. curious what their fee schedule is. Yeah. Okay. I. How about? Ariana, why don't you and I speak with Alberta a little bit further and come up with, with another plan? So we'll circle back on this. Yeah, it, I definitely like the idea of charging when it's over three hours per day uh, when possible. It, the air conditioning during the summer, the trash, the longer people are here, the more trash they're going to generate as well, the things that need to be cleaned up. There's so. also a lot of toilet paper use. Well, I'm not measuring it, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Um, okay, so moving on to business agenda <laughs> item five. So we just have to, the, the, the County Board of Ed is looking to use the fire department space downstairs for the upcoming primaries and general election in 2018. So Corey met with them. Everything's fine from the fire department side. So we just need to approve the, the building be used for the elections. Second. All in favor? Aye. And then the next item is we're going to apply for a third year in a row to the New York State Downtown Revitalization Initiative. Um, this is, uh, you know, we're part of the Mid-Hudson Regional Economic Development Council, so we will apply 
as part of this region and try to secure this $10 million award. So the focus of our application this year will be infrastructure, basically saying that the way to support future economic growth is to take care of the infrastructure we have right now. So we have some off-the-shelf projects, including the hardening of our sewage treatment plant and updating water conveyance projects, updating sewer conveyance projects. Um, we have plenty of infrastructure where we could spend $10 million to, to support our, our downtown, to support our local economy. So we have a resolution that I've circulated and it's identical to the 2017. It's just saying that as a board, we're in agreement that we're going to apply. Mm -hmm. So that my motion is to uh, support that or sign on to that resolution. Second. All in favor? Aye. Oh, just one question too. What's the due date, uh, the deadline? I think it's June 1st. Okay. So I've been, wor I was working with Bl uh, Mark Lauer, our grant writer. So are you just using last year's draft and plugging in the infrastructure stuff or are you just going to do bare bones infrastructure stuff? No, we're taking the 2016 and 2017 applications which have, you know, broader live, work, play themes, right. and then we're identifying specific infrastructure projects. But I actually really like the idea of using Mark as the grant writer to have his voice, mm -hmm. um, and I also encouraged him to look at it as an exercise for us to um, tee up the CDBG application and our application to Environmental Facilities Corp. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have that hardening of the sewage treatment plant project that uh, Dewberry, that's another consulting firm, they were retained by New York Rising. So, you know, we have a three and a half million dollar project there. So we have projects that we can include. Um, so yeah. to answer your question, you know, we sure, have some. But that's fine. Bill it's, and I are happy about this. Yeah, yeah but will we be looped in mm -hmm. at some point during the process prior to going out? Will we see a draft of it? Or? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it'll be uh, exciting to read. Mm -hmm. um, Easier for us this year. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I motion that we move bills and claims. Second. 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 No, we just do it. We just do it this way. As long as I know, but you can just mark it off. Okay. <laughs> so, if if we if it wasn't unanimous, then you could mark off someone who said nay, but you could just fill it in. We're good with that. Change is good. And then um, um, that's the way you guys used to do it. Cold. That's the way you guys <laughs> used to do it in the '90s. Yeah. I don't even know how. You said you, you roll call. Um, but you added the um, budget, budget mod. Yep. Yeah. So I motion we move uh, the budget modifications as per Nancy's memo. Mm. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I motion that we move the Chase and Company proposal. So we're going to collect building department or building permit fees. Um, but then hire a third party to uh, help us do the, re the re do the review. Yes. Aye. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And so we did this earlier in the meeting where we established the charitable trust. So the next item I would like <coughs> is to set a public hearing for June 27th to establish a property tax credit for those donating to the charitable gift reserve fund. Taken. All, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. And was that everything that we added? I believe so. That's all I got. So wow, 50 minutes later. Well, we did have a meeting last week, so. That's true. Well, it's a tea ball game that took long. That's the upside. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So you guys got to come back because I think you're supposed to be here for a full hour and our meeting was only 50 minutes, so you're oh, not going to get credit. Minutes. Just kidding. <laughs> you got to let it hang for a little bit longer. You got to wait till the draw completely yeah. drops. He's too nice.
you did? did you? <laughs>